I think that in the past I perhaps placed a little bit too much importance on those magical, crispy, misty and foggy mornings. But like I said in a video earlier this year, mist and fog are not the secret to successful woodland photography. If we wait, hope for, or worse, expect such conditions, then we perhaps risk missing out on some other fantastic opportunities. You know, coming out, enjoying and photographing my local woodland without the added pressure of producing videos is very important to me. So that's exactly what I did yesterday. The conditions were very flat, to be honest, so I had to work hard, but I came away with an image that I'm very happy with. So what I thought would be quite nice to do is to go back to the same spot, do a complete walk through that photograph, and I think that'll tie in quite nicely with my other recent video where I talked about simple and informed post-processing. So we've just got another short way to go, so we'll keep on going and hope that we can make the image work today as well. So this is my subject here, this fantastic beach tree. I mean, just look at that combination of colours, it's absolutely lovely. And I've timed this quite well, actually, with the, the backlighting. So the light, the sunlight is just starting to drop behind the opposite side of the valley there. And it's giving a glow, which is just giving this very subtle backlighting to the leaves. So it just, uh, nothing's too strong, it's allowing all those natural colours to come through. But to get the most out of this requires a slow and considered approach to get something that's balanced, has flow, and captures those main elements that I've been emotionally drawn to. So the thing that's really attracted me isn't just the shape of the trunks and the branches and the reach of the branches, it's the combination of colors. And this is what I mean by, you know, still making great images when it's not misty or foggy in the woodland, but using different opportunities such as this where we get that tonal contrast. So the combination of different layers of colour shooting against the opposite hillside means that we can really kind of concentrate on the, the flow of colour, the balance of colour, the form of the tree and all that's been simplified by the contrasting tones on the opposite side of the hill. So even though we're bringing out rich autumn colours here with the yellows, the oranges, the lime greens as well, the actual backdrop because it's in complete shade and there's some different species back there so we've got the green of the older trees I can't tell what's on the opposite side of the valley but we do have that contrast in tone so all these gorgeous leaves and rich autumn colors are really standing out against the background so uh, let's go into the composition in a little bit more detail so the first thing that I want to say is when you go into a woodland don't look for trees <laughs> which is Sounds ridiculous, I know, but it, the whole point is to encourage a mindset which avoids looking for a particular type of tree and then photograph it, photographing it in its entirety. Because if I was to do that here, if I stopped, spotted this beech tree and thought, oh, what a beautiful tree, and then tried to photograph the whole thing, it just wouldn't work because there'd be this harsh contrast line where the horizon meets the sky and the whole purpose of the image would be lost. There's no clear emphasis or reasoning or thought process behind the image. Just slow down, take a more considered approach and think, well, why have I stopped and looked at this tree? What is it about it that I'm particularly drawn to? And for me, it's not really the tree itself that I particularly like. Yes, I like the boldness of it. I like some of the shapes in its trunks. I like the, the color of it. But what I'm more drawn to is the arrangement of colour through the scene. So we've got this fantastic yellow which dominates the scene. Just softening the boldness of those tree branches. What I've decided to do is introduce some branches creeping in on the left hand side from the young beech tree. And you would think, well why would you want branches creeping in from the side? But the point is, is that I've decided the image is about the colour. And we've got some orange leaves on this, these branches which creep in, which create a really nice balance. With a little bit of the orange that's coming on the right hand side. 
And then we've got a young beech tree down there that's got these gorgeous kind of lime greens coming through, which balances quite nicely with some of the similar greens coming in at the top left hand corner, a little bit of the green coming at the right hand side. And then we've got this even distribution of darker greens from the older trees in the background. And then just this lovely cool backdrop to make all these fantastic warm colors stand out. So that's going to be my purpose, is get these colors in balance, make the image about those colors, and the lovely delicate qualities against the boldness of the tree. Right, first things first, don't be in a rush to set up the tripod. The last thing we want to do is slam this down and be cemented in that position. Minor movements are absolutely crucial. So I did have the tripod here <laughs> and I moved it there. And the reason for that is because when we look at some of the branches, the optimum separation between those bold branches near the top is just a little bit further to the left, so we get the separation. It's a minor, minor thing, but all these minor adjustments that we make for some of those parts really does make a difference. And it just, those, those little hints of negative space just allow things to breathe in the image. So that was the first thing. Once you've found your optimum, optimum position, get your tripod slammed into the ground. You know, some good spikes in soft woodland soil makes all the difference. There's a bit of a breeze to the day, so the last thing that I want is any movement in the camera whatsoever. Yes, I'm going to get some movement in the leaves, which is fine. I'm not bothered about a little bit of blurriness there, but I want to make sure that tree is sharp. So we need to make sure we've got no movement in the camera or tripod whatsoever. So I've got my tripod nice and stable and the camera quite high. It's important to have the camera high in this instance because the higher it is, the more the tree I can include before the sky becomes an issue. I think this is about the optimum height because that's allowing me to get some branches of the beech tree just finish off in the corners quite nicely so everything feels nicely framed. When I actually have a look in the back of the camera, I frame this so I've got exactly what I want top to bottom. But left to right, it's brought in too much. I've got a slender beech tree on the left, which I don't want and I've got uh, some distractions on the right hand side which I don't want, which is absolutely fine because I use the six by four grid pattern to frame up a five by four crop. It's something that I always encourage us to visualize the end crop because then you're far more likely to get everything in the frame that you wanted. So uh, yeah, that works quite well. Everything's balanced in terms of color. I don't have the base of the tree in, it's not important. It's like I said, the focus is about the flow of color, not just the tree. So I've got this nice balance of color along the bottom, a nice balance of color along the top. I've done my border patrol. There's nothing creeping in that I don't want. So yeah, that's all looking pretty good. So what I'm doing is I'm going to focus on the tree trunks themselves. And the reason for that is because they're completely still. So we need to make sure that they're nice and sharp, whereas the leaves tend to be dancing around a little bit more in the wind. So there's a good chance there's going to be a little bit of movement in those, which is absolutely fine. But I also want a decent depth of field because we've got these orange branches creeping in from the left hand side. So I don't want those to be too soft. I'm not looking for depth and separation by using the shallow depth of field because it's the tones in the scene that are allowing to give that separation. In terms of shutter speed, I have to be quite careful there because we are starting to lose light a little bit. So I'll just have to wait for a calm spot. Um, get an image where the leaves are relatively sharp so we get something that's an image which is a little bit more quiet, gentle and soft. Um, but then I'll probably also purposely try and get one when there's a good gust of wind and get some of those leaves dancing about and get an image which has a little bit more energy to it. So two completely different versions, uh, the same composition but both will have a little bit of a different feel. I'll show both versions anyway. So we've got a nice calm spot there actually so I'll grab a shot now and I'll wait for another gust of wind to get something with, which is a bit more dynamic with a bit more energy in it.
Right, I think that's enough about this image, but I hope you've enjoyed the walkthrough. I'm sure there's lots of things I've missed out. But photography and composition is such a complex subject, and a lot of it is driven by instinct, that thing that we just can't put our finger on. But I think instinct is something that can be nurtured and developed with time, the time that we spend in nature, getting to know locations like this, but also the time that we spend with other photographers and learning from them, and the inspiration that others can give too. But as you've probably seen, it can be a very slow, considered, contemplative and methodical approach because we're essentially trying to craft images. It's not just a quick snapshot of something that we like the look of. It's slowly piecing together and crafting something which really captures the very essence of what we were drawn to and what we want to achieve with the end result. Um, but yes, we better get back to the car before it gets dark, but thank you very much for watching this episode and as always I hope to see you for the next one. I would also like to share this recent photo which reinforces my point of not always looking for trees but sometimes making your woodland images about something else that may appeal such as patterns, shapes, colour and texture. In this case I was drawn to the fantastic shapes in the branches striking in from different directions through the fiery leaves like forks of lightning. Autumn Layers is now available as a limited edition print. Please take a look at my website for prints, water bottles and workshops. I donate a treat to Meg's Grove for every single workshop booking. Any support is very much appreciated. <laughs>